Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the preview of the 2023 AFC Asian Cup. Yes, it's 2024, but it's still the 2023 Asian Cup. We'll talk about that in a second. And yes, this is already the second time that I'm covering the Asian Cup on my channel. Uh, I believe it or not, in 2019 I had only one Asian jersey, Australia, which to me still sounds weird that they are now an Asian team, they are part of the AFC. Uh, now the collection is much bigger and if it would be of interest to you maybe I'll make a video about uh, the collection that I have of Asian teams. I think I put almost all the jerseys. I have a second Australia home jersey uh, but that's about it. So maybe I'll do uh, that la later on. The collection of course would need to grow but we're talking here Asian Cup preview. The actual tournament not my collection although the collection of course features. In any case, uh, among, I have to say, to, to be honest, among all the continental tournaments that happened this year, but overall even, uh, the Asian Cup is clearly my number four. Uh, I would rank it only above the Gold Cup, which I've never done a dedicated video uh, on, uh, and of course the OFC Championship and probably even, you know, all this, if it would still exist, the Confederations Cup, although I think I covered no, I did not, because I didn't have a channel yet, but I would have covered probably the Confederations Cup because of the window. What I have to say, though, in favor of the uh, Asian Cup is that, A, it has a very long tradition already, and it has a very solid four-year rhythm, unlike, for instance, Copa America or the AFCON, which I honestly have to give them big credit for. It's also a tournament where I think an expansion of the former to the 24 teams that we have seen makes in a way also sense because the Asian Confederation is relatively large. The problem is of course competitiveness. Uh, we see that Asian teams on the top are now uh, regularly making into the next round of the World Cup. We're still waiting for another quarterfinal showing though. So it tells you that the Asian Con 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 Confederation is probably uh, just a little bit lagging behind. On the other side however, what the Asian Cup always has done is was always ready for surprises. Remember in 2007 we had Iraq winning it out of nowhere and we also had of course last, last time around Qatar was also totally non-expected while uh, Asian stalwarts like Iran and South Korea are waiting forever to win another continental title. So this adds a little bit to the allure of the Asian, Asian Cup and then we'll see that it's usually a fair favorite and we have to, have to see how far they will go this time uh, round. There's usually uh, it's bounces between East and West now. We'll talk uh, short, shortly about the circumstance we have now the second time that is played in Western Asia, which uh, and kind of the same area as well, which means it's now played in January because originally it was planned to be played in the summer and in the summer it would have been China. Uh, again, one would say and would, China is very much a net, natural choice however, due to COVID and the zero COVID policy, it was pretty clear that China cannot hold up the commitment. So they had to re, they asked for um, further candidates to host the, Asia, the Asian Cup. And uh, it was a short process. I remember at the end of the last World Cup, uh, we did not really know yet who was the host, of course. It became Qatar and we know now that the um, Asian Cup is held in Qatar. It could not be held in summer uh, because of known issues with heat and so on. So it had to be moved to January and that's where we're playing. And yes, this interrupts, of course, the club season and, you know, some of the Asian stars. I'm speaking, is of course, so, uh, Hyunmin Song, but also many uh, Japanese players that are uh, big players within the, Euro the European leagues and, of course, not featuring uh, in their leagues because they have to continental pride at stake. Now Qatar makes for a very, very logically host, having just hosted the World Cup and built world-class stadiums. Interesting enough, all the World Cup stadiums except one uh, is featuring, of course, a 974 stadium that was only shipping containers that was dismantled already during the World Cup once every go, all the games have been played. Uh, all of those feature except for the one but they add actually two more and you see them on the map here's the number five the Yassim bin Hamad stadium and the Abdul bin Khalifa stadium both are uh, in and around Doha like almost every, every everything is only one uh, al Khawad, uh, the al Bayt stadium there which was hosted semifinals and the al Bakra stadium which is probably the most beautiful stadium uh, there the Lusal stadium will host the opening game and the final everything else will be played in other stadiums which kind of makes sense because one would not expect those huge crowds except for a final and of course the opening game 
uh, the teams that have qualified here. Um, I show you here the uh, the pots. We see, of course, host Qatar, um, Japan, Iran, South Korea, Australia, and Saudi Arabia. China as the original host have also qualified. Uh, as, as well, we see Iraq, UAE, Oman, Uzbekistan, and Jordan, uh, which have been regulars at the Asian Cup. We have then in Pot 3, Bahrain, neighboring nation, of course, uh, Syria, Palestine, uh, I think a third successive time, Vietnam, Kyrgyzstan, um, and Lebanon. And in Pot 4, India, who actually made quite a dent last time around, Tajikistan, a newly, uh, the first uh, newcomer, or the only newcomer, Thailand, Malaysia. Uh, Malaysia, I think, is the first time since they hosted. Uh, same thing goes for Indonesia. Uh, and Hong Kong is uh, there also after 54 year old absence. And while one might dismiss Hong Kong as really small, there was they had a test match very recently where they beat China 2 0. So that's a big one. And from that, we got the following groups. Group A, I think that China is in there, makes kind of a little bit sense. Qatar, China, Lebanon, Tajikistan has a little bit the same feel that uh, we had for Group A at the World Cup, where the Netherlands suddenly were the top seed. I still would think, if you look at the ratings, that's the great bar to the left that Qatar is, of course, with home, home of the and as defending Asian champions, should be considered the favorites. And China is, is, we just said it, a little bit of a dodgy team. Group B is a rather interesting one. I mean, there's Australia in there, which, of course, after a round of 16 showing at the World Cup should be considered the favorite, but Uzbekistan is always a great uh, team. Of course, they don't have uh, Jean Maduro from uh, um, Roma, I think. Um, they have Syria in there, coached by Ekta Kupa, and India. So that's definitely an interesting group for sure. We also have Group C, a relatively open group, where I think Hong Kong is ranked outside as Iran should be considered top favorites, but UAE and Palestine uh, have been uh, rel rel relatively good. Japan, I think, got a relatively easy group. Iraq is not the top nation any anymore than it used to be even like eight years ago. We have Vietnam and Indonesia in there, you know. There's a regional pride at stake between those two, but this is probably the most eastern group of them all, if I look at it on the map. Uh, South Korea, per se, the group I don't think is that hard. I mean, Jordan, yeah, could be interesting, but uh, I think South South Korea is the best uh, team in the, in the group, bar none, and one of the best teams at, at this Asian Cup. Of course, coached by Jürgen Klinsmann and co-Austrian uh, Andreas Herzog, the same uh, coaching team that already had the US um, 10 years ago. Uh, but yeah. I think South South Korea will look up, but we'll see that the draw over for them is not very favorable the way that the groups are arranged. Saudi Arabia probably has the most prominent coach in Roberto Mancini. Uh, definitely a lot, loads of pressure to actually bring home the Asian Cup again. It has been since the 90s, I think, that Saudi Arabia have won the Asian Cup. Should also easily win the group of Oman, Kyrgyzstan and Thailand. And I would say this was now my first impressions. Let's look at the predictions from uh, my model. And again, the ratings are based on the betting odds, closing odds on the 9th of January. Uh, Aggregate of a host, I think 14 or 15 bookmakers. I take the FIFA ranking uh, rating and the ELO rating and then combine them into one rating. And we see Group A, I gave Qatar a slight home field advantage. Uh, they are favored over China and then uh, newbies Tajikistan who should probably do well uh, are just over Le Lebanon. Group B Australia should win that one ahead of Uzbekistan but you see already India and Syria mm. could be tied but it should be Australia and Uzbekistan to also to do it. Uzbekistan is a um, team that regularly qualifies out of the group group stage but uh, making a deeper run as the sometimes do on youth level uh, that is what we're looking forward to iran the uae and palestine ahead of hong kong uh, also to no one surprise uh, japan iraq and vietnam uh, is also but you know you see there is already a drop japan really clear favorites then iraq are clearly second and between vietnam and indonesia it's a little bit closer south korea jordan bahrain and then uh saudi arabia oman and thailand coming out of group f um just by the expectations the best four teams should be palestine bahrain syria and thailand with tajikistan and vietnam missing out but you know it's just marginal uh, points you see there, uh, there's almost no difference between Syria, Thailand, and Tajikistan, Vietnam, of course, uh, not expected to make many uh, points in the group with Japan and Iraq, where they're clear outsiders and relatively level in Indonesia. 
given that it all goes like that this is how the bracket would look like and this is probably the most in the interest part and it's always hard for me to gauge a 24 team tournament um because you know at the world cup with 32 teams or a 16 team two tournament if you know how it's set, it's set up it's usually very easy it's not so easy with a 24 two tournament because there's a whole lot more mixture happening um if we look now at the favorites australia's path uh is very convoluted. I mean, it should be an easy, if they win, 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 win the group, they have a quarterfinal with Saucer, Saucer the Arabia looking uh, there. And then uh, if you win it, you play against Japan. Japan's route is relatively uh, convenient. I would say up until the semifinals, it's all the teams they should uh, beat comfortably, um, whether it's Thailand, the UAE or China. Uh, this should all be well in Japan's reach. So I think uh, we can definitely say that Japan should be set on the semi-final. Uh, for Australia, it really depends on, on the same thing for Saw, Saudi Arabia. This, uh, uh, this quarterfinal uh, between each other will tell us a whole lot. As I said, South Korea will not be happy because if they win the group, they're still looking at a quarterfinal against Iran. Those are two of the three strongest teams in the competition, meeting already in the quarterfinal, while on the other side, Qatar and Uzbekistan, this is a relatively low, uh, lowly rated quadrant, if you would like. So, not good. And even if you would say, well, then they should uh, go in second spot. No, then you play Saudi Arabia, Australia and Japan. It makes it even harder. So, uh, even with that, it probably is advantageous for South Korea to uh, finish in first place. Same thing actually goes for Iran. Uh, third place, you could get into the lottery to land in the lowest quadrant. Likely you will not. If you finish sex, sex, second, second, it's really hard, I think, for these top, top teams to not finish among the top two. You may play China, you have another quarterfinal, but then you play Japan. And I think you'd rather play South Korea than Japan. So uh, it's very, very weirdly sa set up in that sense. Um, and very favorable for the hosts. I think Qatar has definitely a semi-final in them, but same thing will go for Uzbekistan. My model, if it all goes, that always the favorite moves on, says they will have a Japan-Iran final, and South Korea will be exiting at the quarterfinal stage, as will Saudi Arabia. And this, they've invested in two big-name coaches. It would be huge disappointments, one has to say, for sure. Um, Overall, the favorites, you see Japan kind of also because of the Kushi draw, in a way. Uh, Kushi, you know, you have a relatively clear route to the semifinals. Uh, that's why Japan is already riding high, had 24% chance of one in f uh, four chance. Iran and South Korea, yes, they're on collision course, that's why uh, they're much closer, although the ratings, yes, Japan are the clear favorites, but the ratings are not. Uh, as disjointed as uh, the overall winners would say. Uh, and that's also the reason why Australia is kind of <laughs> stuck there. So we have the top four, Japan, Iran, South, South, South Korea and Australia. Qatar and Saudi Arabia, they have already a big step uh, behind and then it's a wide open field. It is really hard to predict who could spring a surprise. Uh, I personally would love if India could move on, uh, given their draw, it is unlikely. I would also like to see that, you know, one of those Vietnams and Indonesias that uh, Malaysia that have shown that they have potential, that they want to move a little bit forward. Um, let's see, China has always been a team that I wanted to uh, at one time to win the Asian Cup, but I don't think it's China's time at all this time around. I think it is more that we will have a uh, Western team uh, going to so the Arabic Peninsula. I think they, I would expect some uh, strong showings there. Also, don't discard there are many Indians living in Qatar, so they will be well supported as well. Let's look at the first set of games. As I said, it kicks off on the 12th of January. I think for European times, the kickoff times are relatively all right ish uh, because. There is, uh, I think it's a uh, two hour time difference, so you have them relatively early on. So during work, you can put them on. I just learned that I can actually watch it on Sport Guitar. So if you're living in the German speaking world, if you have to access to that also via the zone, that's pretty cool. I think uh, the opener between Qatar and Lebanon is probably not so great. Then China plays against Newby Tajikistan. I think the first title should be Australia against India. Uh, also, Japan against Vietnam is very interesting. And where the 
games are very strategically placed as well. Um, then uh, the second uh, page for the, for, for the further groups, we have Iran playing against Palestine. That could be a really interesting one as well, South Korea against Bahrain. Uh, although, at, and then Saudi Arabia against Oman is also a kind of a top duel there. I just fear that at first there will be very little goals and then it picks up as the tournament progresses. So yeah, that was it from me. Previewing the Asian Cup. Um, as for the coverage on my channel, I am planning to give you an update after every round played, uh, you know, because we have also other stuff going, going, going on. I really want to do a jersey review uh, on the Asian Cup as together with the AFCON as, as well. So look out for that. I hope I will find the time to do so. Uh, and as I said, maybe I'll do a collection video on that. But in any case, let, let me know what you think. Who will win the Asian Cup? Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And I will talk to you about more things from my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.